She stood by nervously watching the wind flicker the blaze. Yes, for now the blaze was safely contained in a small, single pit. This fire brought no warmth to her, though. Just the opposite, actually. A painful chill coursed through her body as she contemplated the ultimate cost of such a small and short-lived fire. She looks at her beloved. He was mesmerized by his fire. It comforted him. If she stepped a little closer, she too could feel a little magical tingle. She remembered. Still, she kept her distance as her beloved lingered a few more minutes. She waits. The minutes pass. Then an hour passes. She stands waiting, hoping he will notice her. But instead, her beloved remains by his silly little fire contained in his pit. A few more minutes pass when suddenly another fire man comes along and stands next to her beloved. Now she is anxious. There is nothing heroic in this fire man. Instead, it's a sign of imminent danger. And just as she feared, her beloved's flame is engulfed and seeps past the boundaries of his small pit. She backs away as the fire spreads to the ground beneath the two firemen's feet. Her beloved does not even notice. He just stands next to the fireman, talking, laughing as if there is nothing whatsoever to worry about. The flames are slowly inching toward a can of fuel. It's only a matter of time before there is another explosion. She knew what an explosion like that could do. Her beloved knew too. Surely he remembers. Is it possible he has forgotten? Or did he choose to forget? She inches further away, tears welling up in her eyes. She calls to her beloved, Come away from the fireman. Come away with me. But her voice is not heard over the boisterous mumblings of the two fire men. As hard as it is to leave her beloved, she knows unless she walks away, she too will be part of the wreckage of the impending explosion. If only her beloved would listen to her voice, they could both find true warmth from the oil lamps waiting on them on a narrow path ahead. He would not listen. So with tears now streaming down her face, she takes her little light and shines it ahead. The road ahead seems filled with nothing but darkness. The roaring blaze behind her creates an eerie shadow that seemed to whisper to her, go back to the fire. Still, she makes her step steady and walks on. With only enough light to see the next step ahead, she carefully keeps traveling on. Finally, her little light illuminates something up ahead. It's a backpack. Inside, she finds a guidebook and an oil lamp filled with oil. With a single match, she touches the oil-saturated wick and light floods the path ahead. The shadows from behind disappear. While the tears uncontrollably flow, wetting her cheek, she suddenly feels a warm and familiar hand inside hers. She is no longer alone. It's her daddy. He is standing next to her. Oh, the comfort and peace of having her daddy with her holding her hand and catching every tear before it could touch the ground. They walk for a little while. With each step, she walks more at ease, knowing even in this darkness, her daddy knows where they are going. A ways down the path, her daddy pauses for a moment to wipe away his daughter's tears. It will be okay, my daughter, he says. Just keep holding my hand and we will be home soon home. Oh, to be finally at home. As they keep walking, she listens as her daddy tells her all that he has prepared for her when they get home. Psalm 35. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning.